Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. Neil Brennan, welcome back. Yeah, good to be here. Neil is back with another special called Crazy Good. Neil is one of the uh, last of the comedians who actually make special special. Thank you, Charlamagne. <laughs> thank you for noticing, and thank you for dissing most of my peers. <laughs> did both at the same time. <laughs> yeah, why not get your man who can do both? Uh, hit it. Do you feel less pressure of putting this one out versus the others, like the blocks, three mics? This one is not. If you thought the other ones were on some emo bullshit, um, I hear you. This one has no emo-ness to it at all. It's just like 53 minutes of like, this is me like sprinting. I like the emo-ness. I know, I do too, but there are people that are like, nah. Yeah. My man was a little too, a little too introspective. I don't have a problem with that. Somebody else, you know, somebody said that to me about uh, Bill Burr recently. They was like, Bill might be doing a little too much there. Well, you know, I'm like, yeah, no, with that? Fun. Well, I watched him on here, and it was <laughs> funny to see him be like that because it's so not what he's been like. Mm -hmm. But I, but I, Bill was sort of weirdly the inspiration for Three Mics in a weird way because mm -hmm. he had done a thing called The Moth, and he talked about emotional stuff. So, so I just, but I just did two of them, and the other thing is like, I feel better. I don't feel depressed anymore so i didn't gotcha. i wasn't gonna force it mm -hmm. a dude i did the show uh i did crazy good in dc and a dude dm me afterward and was like i kept waiting for you to show up because <laughs> he was basically saying like why weren't you sad yeah, yeah so yeah. i have an announcement at the beginning of the show like Hey, I'm not sad. Mm -hmm. So just enjoy yourself. Let me let me ask you a question. What what got you, what got you out of that sad spot? Because you've been up here several times. Yeah, and you had a total different light, different space. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Neil Brennan's not sad today. He's not down. He's not Neil Brennan, sir. I said Neil Brennan. Oh, they said Nick. Yeah. No, I said no, Neil no. Brennan. So what got you into that? To, Stay to, out of this. Yeah. <laughs> what, what got you into that, this new space? Uh, um. Well, I. I call it plant medicine. The cops call them drugs. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, uh, honestly, yeah. The, the I thing I talked about before ayahuasca, uh, this thing called DMT, which I don't recommend, but it was it kind of broke my brain and then it re congealed into something better. And then this past year, MDMA has been really good for, if you do MDMA in a non-party space, mm -hmm. it can be, uh, it can, it can. in my experience, it was a God connection. MDMA, that, that's not acid, Ex is it? Ecstasy. Ecstasy, okay. Yeah, okay, Molly. Okay. So what, what made you think you needed that? Like, what got you to the point where, let me try ayahuasca, let me Cause try. Because I, I tried Zoloft, I tried, I tried everything. And, uh, and it was kind of working, and this was, it was just it it was kind of a Hail Mary, like let's see. And uh and the funny thing is people can tell. Like when you're like, Neil's not that. Yeah, like I'm just kind of different. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing orange. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, but I am like energetically I'm different. And it's due to that. And then I've just gotten a lot of uh like it's the corniest shit in the world, but like gratitude. Mm-hmm. You've been doing. You've been on gratitude a long time. Absolutely. Um, I was talking to a buddy of mine about how, how I I was like I was doing like a gratitude checklist, mm -hmm. and I would do it once a day, and I would just go over the facts of my life because the our brains kind of write sci-fi mm -hmm. about like so and so's out to get you and she hates you and this and that and but none almost none of it's true. And so I would do a gratitude checklist of like the facts of my life. Like you are a successful comedian. You have three Netflix specials. You're, you're, you know, you have a commitment to growth. You're curious, you're intelligent, you know, all like at positive attributes. And then a buddy of mine was, and we were talking about Islam and I go, Islam's got it right where they're like, they pray five times a day. Like you kind of need to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he goes, well, why don't you gratitude five times a day? And I was like, okay. So I've been doing that and I, I don't always get to five, but but I've been doing that for the last four or five months, and it's been, it's been great. So you find something to be thankful for five times a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I just do kind of the same list five times a day yeah. of like the facts of my life. Like I'm a health. I mean, you, anyone that can hear this, 
things are going pretty well. Even though if you're having a bad day or you're in debt mm-hmm. or like there are things that are negative, but like if you live in in a in a world where you can watch this or hear this, things are better for you than they are for a lot of the world. Who are those things check off on their own? Waking up mm-hmm. and making it home safely at night. That is a very under appreciate that's a very unappreciated blessing to make it home at night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody had to make it home. That's right. That's right. That's right. Like either they not like they a lot of people dying at work. No, but I'm saying like <laughs> You be be aware. Yeah. Uh, no, but like people yeah. die. Just that's right. stuff that's real basic. That's right. You forget, and if you can, I and it's uh, it's like I said, it's so corny, but like it's effective. Uh, just doing, just remembering how fortunate you are. I was gonna ask, you know, were you ever ever fearful of losing that quote unquote touch? Right when you ever speak to a, sometimes rappers, they'd be like, I don't want to give up the lean because. That's, I think that helps me write better. Mm-hmm. Did you ever feel like if I go through when I'm going through the ayahuasca, whatever you, you're trying to get you know, over that that bump, that hump, that you would lose your touch as a comedian, or the genius as I a comedian? I don't really, there, I, I'm of two minds about it, which is mm-hmm. one of them is I don't, it's a reflex at this point. Like I've been doing this like 30 years. So if a news story happens, I can kind of like, nah, mm-hmm. you know? And, uh, and if I lose it, I had a good run. Like I started yeah. half baked came out twenty seven years ago. Right. Wow. So no, I know. So like I've been I wrote for all that on Nickelodeon. Like I've been out here. You wrote for uh, all I was, that. For yes, I was so fighting the molesters. <laughs> um and uh like I I've been doing this a long ass time. Mm-hmm. So if it if it if I if I lose the touch, I lose the touch. But what what I found is the touch is uh a reflex at this point. Gotcha. Like I can just, I just, my brain does it. Speaking out of, of the, the yeah. touch, did you see any of that on uh, Nickelodeon? When Thank you, you for for bringing that up. Uh, I didn't see any of it, Charlemagne. Um, but uh, but I I am against it. Yeah. So I would hope so. Now we're on the record, and uh, hopefully this will hold up in court. Jesus Christ, Neil! <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I didn't see that. Yeah. yeah. Nah. Now, all your specials have great names, but it's not just names. If you've seen Three Mics, you know why it's called Three Mics. Yeah. If you've seen Blocks, you know why it's called Blocks. I'm assuming Crazy Good is just Crazy Good. Uh, crazy Good is actually... Okay, so one of the parts of the special is making fun of the commodification of mental health. Mm-hmm. Like making fun of TikTok, uh, psychology, and all that mm-hmm, shit. Mm-hmm. And so... I, I'm not against it, but I just feel like the amount of people making videos about trauma and and uh, and all the diagnoses of like you're being gaslit, just all that stuff is <laughs> so weird. aggravating. It's so aggravating, and it's also dishonest because none of these people have any idea what they're talking about. No. They just heard it on another TikTok. Um, so I'm basically toward the end. I'm saying, you know, you're you, you do go to therapy. Take medication, do I do all the stuff you got to do, but just know that most of the great things in life are from psychopaths and drug addicts. Damn, Jesus. I mean, if I'm wrong, let me know. Expound on that. Um, all right, all the all the inventors, Sigmund Freud, okay, open cokehead. Yep. Most of Freud's books should be called this may be the cocaine talking. Like there <laughs> he was a coke head. Mm-hmm. Uh like yeah, women are jealous of our dicks. Yeah. Uh, like it's real cokey shit. Yeah. Um, Edison did coke. The Wright brothers. I don't know if they were on coke, but like, I mean, or on meth. But they had the methiest idea, which is like, hey, do you fucking feel like you can fly? Um, <laughs> the all like uh, the modern inventors, Elon Musk. Ketamine. Uh, he does ketamine. Alone. Something. Yeah, ketamine. Yeah. Or he's just out of his mind. And then I get into like, well, what about musicians? Okay. Mm -hmm. The Rolling Stones had, in order to tour America, had to get a doctor to test them for drugs every day. And uh, the doctor lasted six weeks before he got hooked on cocaine. Damn. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, Hip hop, lean, weed, weed, (laughs) skirts. Yeah. (laughs) I saw that part. Um, Yeah. So, (laughs) so, you know, 
there's just it, it, like there's and and then I do comedians. Mm-hmm. Well, are you guys all psychopaths and drug addicts? I'm like, so far. Richard Pryor, drug addict. George Carlin, drug addict. Bill Cosby, choose your own adventure. Um, <laughs> uh, the modern ones, like, you know, Lenny Bruce, a drug addict. Uh, John Belushi's a drug addict. John Mulaney told me to remind people he's a drug addict in the bit. Wow. <laughs> like, people were all something. So I'm not saying don't treat it. I'm not saying, you know, ride it. But I'm just saying the audience needs to accept that we're uh, we're not. The other thing that's been happening is like comedians are like moral leaders, you know, uh, like Dave or or being a. It's like why? Well, it's there are these serious issues, and you know, like transgender rights and stuff. And then mm-hmm. how bankrupt are other segments of society that they finally were like. Well, what do the clowns think? <laughs> Why are you asking us what we think about these? The, this should have never gotten to our desk. It's for politicians and clergy and other leaders. But like, don't turn to Joe Rogan for vaccine advice. Yeah, I think there's yeah. one, though. I would say when I watch George Carlin now, he was very prophetic. Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he also I can name a bunch of real dark shit. Like he had a bit uh, about bulimia. Rich bitch won't eat. Fucker. <laughs> Not exactly the most <laughs> ethical take. <laughs> he had you know he went both ways. So again, they were they we can be that, but the jo- no one moves out to L. A. to be righteous yeah 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 everyone moves out there to be funny and famous you know and it's the same thing with like is ellen nice is ellen and i'm like first of all ellen's hilarious Mm -hmm. a and b she's a gay rights icon like like i don't i don't need her to be she came out on television got kicked off television for being gay and then came back and dominated but that's not enough for people they're like yeah but is she nice it's so childish. <laughs> mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. like being like, is my car also a boat? Mm-hmm. Just appreciate that you have a car. Also, is Ellen nice? How many nice lesbians have you ever met in your entire life? You know what I mean, guys? <laughs> I say it. Stu- we don't talk about toxic studs enough. I say it, <laughs> I say it often. I yes. know. <laughs> yeah. uh, step up, toxic, toxic studs. <laughs> I wonder with comedians, right? Because they always talk about the trauma that comedians have experienced. I wonder if it is the expectation of always having to make people laugh. You know how psychotic that is to get on stage in front of hundreds, thousands of people and say, I'm going to make them laugh. Yeah, it's a very hard job. Yes. It's a very hard job and it's a very weird job. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, how do you do it on The Daily Show? How do you do, meaning well, the I'll, difference between this mm-hmm. and that? Well, because uh, number one, I don't approach it from a comedian's perspective because I'm not a comedian. And number Thank two, you. The, Thank the, you for saying that. Yes. <laughs> I hate when they say that. But the Daily Show allows me to go in depth on things I might just touch here on the surface. But are you, do you worry about getting laughs? No. I rather, that really? I, no. I'm, 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 more so, I'm more so concerned with just saying something. Because that, that's when I look at the Daily Show, that's the type of institution that it is. I'm more co- so concerned about saying something that I know people are going to actually being formed by and take something away from and be like, oh, okay. Yeah, but you don't want to do that thing where you do what might have been a punchline and you hear that air conditioning unit in the background. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, uh-oh, <laughs> okay. But uh, I feel like I do that anyway naturally, though. I feel like, you know, I've, you have to use humor to push push things along. Right, but there yeah. it's sort of like... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. M- metered for laughs. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just wondering if you get... It's not scared, but like uh, a little yes. bit like you're, yeah, scared. Good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And and do you change your approach? You just read what's on the, you write uh, it, read what's on the prompter. Yeah. Cause I might be a psychopath or some type of sociopath. It's yeah. like you, you, you know you're going to either get the laugh or you're going to feel the pain of not. Right. That's the other thing is like, I don't, you know, a lot of people, uh, it's, I have, I have a huge hunk about athletes too, cause we want, you know, good mental health in sports. And I'm like, you know, I want good mental health for everybody, but not mm-hmm. athletes. 
Like we need our athletes to be psychos. <laughs> what? We I let me repeat myself, Envy. We need our athletes to be. Did you see the last dance? Did Michael Jordan seem mentally healthy to you in the slightest? Giant mansion, one chair. Come on, guys. <laughs> uh, he's out of his mind. So what I'm saying, punching Steve Kerr, and then I don't. Ca- and then people are like, "Well, he's you know he's an angry guy. He's not a great husband or dad." I'm like, "Well, I'm not married to him." I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. Be as long as you don't break the law. Mm-hmm. I you can be as rotten to the people around you as well. LeBron said on his podcast the other day, "In order to be great, you have to hurt your loved ones." <laughs> yeah, he said you got to be selfish. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and that's what the gambit is. All these people, any great athlete is Tom Brady is out of his mind. Mm-hmm. It's like he couldn't even. He retired, made it like ten days, and he was like, "I don't know these fucking kids." Like you, can't, <laughs> like you don't know all. Any great is out of their mind, I, and I'm not even getting to like OJ. I'm I'm talking about just like MJ, LeBron's a little something, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? If he's saying in public you have to hurt your family, uh, uh, like Lance Armstrong. The joke I did on the show was like I don't even consider Lance Armstrong an athlete. I consider Lance Armstrong a criminal who found a bike. Damn, like damn. that guy is a criminal. Damn. He li- think about the worst lie you ever told, and then imagine selling bracelets about it. <laughs> this guy's gone. Uh, Tiger, Tiger. I mean, that dude. He he's like he's 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 Tokyo drifting at six thirty in the morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, he these guys are wired to, and by the way, the women are too. Mm-hmm. Like like the gymnastics girls. We don't give those girls enough credit, man. Like that's a crazy thing they're doing a lot of them aren't getting paid a lot of them were getting sexually abused which yeah. is insane yeah uh and and you got to get it right the first time and you got to stick the landing yeah, yeah, yeah. or you're not you ain't getting no wheaties yeah, 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 yeah. you ain't getting the yeah. cover of wheaties with yeah. the wobbly landing you yeah. gotta nail it the the figure skating girls they look like they're in trouble like they first of all it looks like they've never even seen makeup the first, the, when they it's like when they do the thing the routine and mm-hmm. they gotta like they've never it's like their first day with makeup like <laughs> doll 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 <laughs> shock horror like they're and then they gotta they yeah, and then yeah, they yeah. gotta they do like the hologram thing uh, and then they gotta finish and sit in the booth with their kidnappers um, at the end <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's people being mentally unwell or People are really using their brains. And what I mean by that is if you decide that, you know, you want to wake up every day and just do the same routine over and over, it doesn't really take much brain function. But people that are really having to open up their brains and use their minds is just using the brain to that fullest extent. Does that just make you feel, drive you crazy or make you seem crazy? I don't, I think that... You know, uh, the joke I do in the show is is it's like um, when you're doing a video, when you're making a video game character, mm-hmm. if you have like 100 points for like, you know, dexterity and speed and all this stuff. It's like that's kind of what God does. And sometimes he just gets the calibration wrong. Wow. You know what I mean? Like with when God was making Woody Allen, they were like, how many, he was like, how many points should we give him for comedy and filmmaking? And he's like, fuck it, give him 100. And then they were like, but that's not going to leave any points for not fucking his family. Um, and, uh, and I think so, that would be low emotional IQ. Well, yeah, right. that's a nice way to put it. Um, uh, that's what that's what the charges were. He low emotionally IQ. Um, yeah, like so. I just think if you're you're good at one thing, it's a weird. If you can rhyme good, it's like rap. That's your brain. Most people's brains don't come up with couplets like that. Right. I, most people don't see mm-hmm. the world analytically. Most people don't see, let alone ana- analytically and, uh, you know, f- f- funnily. So it's just you're going to be deficient in other areas as long as you're not breaking the law. Do you, mm. do you think it's the gifts that make you shitty or the world that comes with the gifts? Oh, being a shitty person? Yeah, I think. Oh, like, when you, I mean, I think. you can it's, have the gift, but it's, I think it's the world, the access, the power, the money. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think it, it, it's, I, I can't think of many people that have been made. You have to make a real effort to uh, stay centered mm-hmm. with all the. That's right. 
because it just becomes like if everywhere you go people say you're in great shape you're never going to go to the gym you know what i mean so if everyone's like oh anything for you sir or miss or whatever it's like you're just not it's people will only be as good as they have to be mm. that, that's been my experience like if in or if you demand it of them then they'll do it but people will naturally do as little as they it's like homework like what do i got to do mm-hmm. to get an a they, if you're famous and talented, you don't have to do much. You just have to do the trick. You just got to be funny when the when it's time to be funny. You know, with your resume and your talent and all the things that you've done and mm-hmm. how funny you are, do you feel like you look you get overlooked a lot by the public? Like you should be a bigger comedian because, like you said, the years that you put in this industry from writing, from being on stage, from telling yeah. jokes, from all that. Uh, you know, I don't. I could say yes or no because I kind of feel like there's no one who I feel like I deserve their I should be in their place. Right. You know what I mean? Like when so, and I also feel like certain people, the the people that are like people that do arenas or whatever, it's like they have real, like real nat- performance attributes that I don't necessarily have. Like they're just really they walk on stage. And you're like, well, this is going to be... I always tell Kevin Hart, he is sunshine. He's sunshine. <laughs> yeah, bright, I, I direct some of those Chase commercials. Yeah. You cut to that motherfucker in a close-up, the sun is shining. That's right. It can be, an in, it can be in, a, in a house. He's just like, let me tell you something, Charlamagne. Just, he's, Dave is Bugs Bunny. Mm-hmm. He just is Bugs Bunny. There's nothing you can do about it. Chris Rock talks like a chainsaw. <laughs> It's like Ellen sounds like a flute and a and a baby. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld sounds like a clarinet. <laughs> so so all these people, it's I mean, and the, I've clearly I've thought about it, but it's I'm again the gratitude thing. You've had a great career, Neil. I've had a dude. I've had an. Why are we amazing, talking to Neil like he's I've dying? Had, yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> I have an announcement to make, everybody. Uh, so no, but I. That's the thing. Is like I, I could focus on like what? Why not? I'm. What else? What else? What would happen? What am I looking for? Like I need to be on private jets instead of business class. Like I don't. I'm. I'm good. Like I don't. I don't. And I'm not saying it like. I wouldn't accept it or I wouldn't accept a promotion in some ways, but like I do theaters. I come on here, people watch it. Um, and I, yeah, it's, I, I appreciate the question, but, but I, and, and I was kind of hung up on that for a long time, but the last six months to a year, I've just been like, this is amazing. Like the, I'm either in the ring mm-hmm. or I have ringside seats gotcha. for, for for life, it seems not like forever, but like so far, you know. I don't know if people know, but Neil used to be called. You, you call him the Black Comic Whisperer because mm. you were in all like the legendary Black Comics ears mm-hmm. from the Chappelle's to the mm-hmm. Rocks, mm-hmm. right? So when you see everything that's been going on with Black comedians this year, all started by the Club <laughs> Shay Shay Cat Williams conversation. Uh-huh. What are your thoughts? Um, I I would say Cat Williams is the most Cat Williams on a podcast or a show is like Mike Tyson in the late eighties where it's the most exciting 90 seconds in sports. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We're like, God damn, like you cut, he is going to make some shit happen. Uh, He is like what they, in basketball, what they call instant offense, Mm -hmm. like put him in, he's getting his shot off. (laughs) Um, So I don't, I mean, cats hilarious. And the and some of the people Cedric the Entertainer is one of the funniest people I've ever been around. Mm-hmm. Like some of the people he dissed, I'm like, I just disagree with uh, his his appraisal of them, and and almost to per- like I everyone he talked about was really funny, and Cat's great, and all the people he went after were great, and I'm sorry that's he felt that that's how he needed to do it, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna as I'm gonna. Uh, take my white ass out of it <laughs> where do white comedians go to start beefs like that was it rogan uh a little bit i yeah it's i think it's a little less it's a it's it's catty mm-hmm. but i think it's more 
I, I think I I want I don't want to say like we keep it private, Charlemagne. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it I I can't remember a time where there was like shots fired like that. Like I don't. It's just it didn't seem. But I but it was. If you're asking me, did I watch it twice? I did. <laughs> Cat on Club Shay Shay. What What are your thoughts on comedians critiquing other comedians For, about two things in particular? One, whether or not another comedian is funny, and two, uh, this. I think it's to me it's kind of a new phenomenon comedians saying other comedians are making offensive jokes. The offensive thing is again why are you asking the clowns for it's like it's like uh why are you going to clowns for morality? You know, it's like eating a Snickers and being like this isn't very nutritious. No shit. <laughs> it's a Snickers bar. Uh I don't think com I think if a comic criticizes another comedian's morality the critic probably isn't very funny. That'd be my first mm-hmm. guess. And uh, and in the, I I just think it's a I think it's bad. If you got something a problem with somebody, I would just say like address it directly or leave it. Because I don't I the, there's plenty of people I think are shitty at comedy. I just don't. I just avoid them. Or I'd say like you know you did your thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Something vague. Uh, but I don't, but I, I would never criticize somebody in public that I can, I'm sure I have, but I, I try to avoid it if I can. Yeah. Cause we was talking about that this week with, uh, Gerard Carmichael and, yeah. and Dave Chappelle. Cause he said, first he was saying, you know, Dave's whole legacy is transgender jokes. Mm-hmm. And then he said, Dave's an egomaniac, but then literally, and I said, I said, you should not criticize the comedian about anything offensive. Cause it can happen to you in a second. And literally less than 12 hours later, mm-hmm. they're on Gerard about what he said on his HBO show. And you know, uh, being a, in slave a role playing slave and master, master with his wife. Well, yeah, boyfriend. it's like it's like uh, me too and somebody. It's like mm-hmm. I don't. You can you, you can get popped. Mm-hmm. We can all get popped mm-hmm. for tons of any. If you've been doing it long enough, like you did a pot. You don't even. We all do so many podcasts. You don't even remember. Mm-hmm. And then someone go remember that, and you're like, no, but that is my. I guess I said that. Mm-hmm. So that's the thing of like casting the first stone. Like you. It's a dangerous game because everyone, it's like mutually assured destruction. Mm-hmm. Basically, once you start. Uh, point fingers. Yeah, point fingers. It's it, yeah, it's yeah. it's going to be Spider-Man yeah, yeah, yeah. in any any minute. You know, B- Bill Burr spoke about being on Chappelle's show back in the day. Did you know that all of those guys, the Burrs, the Rogans, the, the Donnell Rollins, Charlie Murphy, did you know all of these people would end up being, what's up for Donnell, icons in their own right? <laughs> did you see how I picked Donnell up there? No, I'm focusing on uh, the with the bento. Oh, with the Ashley, that's hilarious. <laughs> bent over, yeah. Was he wearing Timberlands? <laughs> yeah. All right, great. Um, he looks. He doesn't look like them, but I like how fat he is. It really <laughs> captures his doughiness. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, the yeah. I mean, I remember when Bill auditioned and Dave was like, "Thank God he can act," because that dude's really funny. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Charlie and. Yeah, I, dude, I if I all I remember about doing the show is just it was very hard, but it was very gratifying to be able to have like small ideas with me and Dave and then being able to expand them. Cuz the Charlie I don't know if I've ever told you that, but like we me and Dave wrote half baked. We turned it in, right? In, in 1997. We have a celebratory mushroom night Mm -hmm. and uh and this is when i wasn't using uh medicine for healing Mm -hmm. it was back when i was just using it to party baby and we have we do mushrooms go to club and i see dave talking to this guy and i'm like is it like eddie murphy's brother like fat brother and then i go over and it's charlie Mm -hmm. and i didn't know him and charlie's like i'm on mushrooms and charlie's like holding court like yeah me and my brother came out here, did it, it was the only real motherfuckers here, and did it, Jerry Curls and all that shit. And, uh, and then, and he kept talking about Hollywood, and, and Charlie was going, there's poison in ice cream. There's this motherfucker, <laughs> there's poison in ice cream. So then me and Dave would say, there's poison in ice cream for like years. Then we were writing that real world sketch, and we were like, you know, we should get, for this, we should get uh, Charlie Murphy, see if he can do it. And then based on doing shrooms with him five years earlier and being like, it's something about that guy. Wow. So I guess there, and then, and then snowballed into, and then he tells the Rick James story. He tells the Prince story. He, and, and, uh, 
and then it just became it, it changed all of our lives so it's i you know it's like taking taking credit for it seems wrong because it's we all got we we all got so much from it mm -hmm. from having him on the show he tells a story that my life it's like you know before and after mm -hmm. that sketch airing like i can almost tell you the date it was 20 years ago like recently wow could it, could a show like that exist ever again i think you could probably figure out a way to do the sketches but in terms of impact everything's so uh, it was one, it was like one funnel, like culture was one funnel. The, uh, and so you would get it like, go to the funnel and get what came out. And now there's, so, there's, you know, a million funnels on all of our phones. So you just go like, I subscribe to 40 funnels. And then you, but it used to be like, do you, there was only one place to go or right. three places to go. So we can't, we were, we were we were, we, I guess Comedy Central wasn't like as big before Chappelle show, but, but it was always big. And then, yeah, so I don't, you could probably do the sketches, but I don't think it would have the, the thing where everyone's watching it. Gotcha. You know, I don't mm -hmm. think. Do you guys think? It depends who the, the talent is. Yeah. yeah. Who's doing it. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. It's, it's possible, but, but it's unlikely. Like no, yeah. Okay. No, Dave always says like people are probably not going to be famous mm -hmm. again the same way I was. No, duh. Yeah. No way. That's been over. <laughs> I know, but it is an interesting thing of like why not? And you go because it's you can't. It's the funnel problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, like I was, you know, Mike Myers. Like uh, I was talking to Mike Myers, the comedian, and we were talking about showbiz, and he was he was talking about showbiz, and I as he was talking, I was like, in one decade, Mike Myers was Wayne. From Wayne's World, mm -hmm. Shrek, Doctor Evil, and Austin Powers. He could run for president. One guy. Wow. One guy. He's Canadian. Oh. Uh, wow. One guy <laughs> in ten years. In yeah. ten, like, damn. So that, and he goes, yeah, it was a monoculture, and now it's like, sort of more of a free for all. 80s, 90s celebrity is so powerful. Literally, you can get elected president of the United States of America. Yeah, it's a different level of celebrity. Yeah, black or white, it it's just a different level of celebrity. Yeah, it is like the last of the like Tom Cruise. Yes, Madonna. Yes, I saw you two at the Sphere. Like they're real, and they sold seven hundred fifty thousand tickets in two months. It's like that's a lot of tickets. But that's when it was real fandom, real talent, and the barrier of entry was way more difficult to get in any of these spaces. I yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. You had to. You, you well you had to be talented or you had to be like because I don't think Madonna or Tom Cruise are the most but they're really good at like they don't Madonna doesn't have the best singing voice Tom Cruise probably doesn't have the best acting instrument but like they fig they were good they took the job seriously That's right. like Tom Cruise is like <sighs> like jumping rope mm -hmm. before you know like doing shit to make himself his last movie he did his own stunts yeah it's crazy yep you was talking about comedians with morals, right? And we mm -hmm. shouldn't go to the clowns yeah. for morality. But what about Kevin Hart and Ella DeGeneres? What Cause, about them? Because you said that they, uh, and, and especially you said that they have to be they have to be great humanitarians and role models. Well, what I'm saying is they they're expected to be, oh, they're but expected? but it's okay, not okay, okay. but it's not a realistic expectation. Got you. Got you got That's you, got what you. I have a joke in the special about Kev, where like I had a handyman at my house who was like do you know kevin hart and i was like yeah and he goes is he humble and i was like <laughs> you're a handyman you're not humble mm -hmm. like why does kevin have to be humble mm -hmm. what, what he was asking me is hey neil is that five foot three billionaire humble what do you think how humble do you think kevin hart is on a scale from napoleon to tom cruise if you had to guess why are you looking to kevin hart for humility but he tries to be, to your point, when you say, when you say, <laughs> well, it depends what you're talking about. The no, pe Kevin's the, a nice, I yeah, would, yeah, I yeah. would, like, you, yeah. we all know Kevin. Yeah, Kevin's yeah. a good dude. Yeah. But he's not humble. Nor should he. Why does he have to be humble? What's the definition of humble? Well, he's not, I, I, it's different, right? Because around your peers, he you want to talk to your shit, you yeah, know what I mean? But to people, he's yeah, he's, he is. He's humble to the people. He yeah, he's talk, a yeah. nice guy. Well, because they can all throw him in the trash. He's tiny. <laughs> um, uh, he has to be humble. He he's uh, just for security. Because even with Kev, Kev does things that I think other people in this situation wouldn't do. 
Kevin right. still come back and touch places that other comedians. Kevin's actors, a actors great. I do, I you know? really mean that yeah, one. Yeah, like yeah. Kev's a great dude, mm-hmm. but like this expectation that celebrities have to be moral, it's just like a fake. It's a just moving the goalposts. I'm not saying. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not saying they should be able to break laws or any of that stuff, but I'm just saying I think it's a fake expectation based on uh, somebody because you're doing well, then people go, well, you then are you nice? I get what you're saying. I, yeah. You know what I mean? Like sometimes, are you nice? I'm yeah, nice yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes. Yeah, I, I it's saying. a human being. We're That's, humans. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. like why there's churches on every corner because we're not nice. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. you just because we need constant reminders mm-hmm. of like, don't murder. Ten That's Commandments. True. Look at this. Yeah. Don't murder. And you're yeah. like, okay, yeah, no, no. Oh, you're yeah. right. I shouldn't murder. But we need constant reminders. That's right. And the expectations that it, they, they'll come from clowns is a bit like, come on. Come on. There's other there's it's it's not it should not be our responsibility. It's a it's a it's a failure of priests, imams, clergy, you know, like and and politicians mm-hmm. and cause they couldn't keep their dicks in their pants and so now it's like well all right shit who else we got uh that ellen seems pretty you know what i mean ah like, <laughs> uh, who else you know yo you're next man to, to do they're what? gonna start looking for you for morality no they've been please you think so <laughs> nah <laughs> nah no i'm nah, not funny nah. enough nah, I, no no right. I, I i think i'd uh i i put it out there enough like i i want to i don't want to i don't want to i don't want that i want to be the bad guy you do want to be the bad guy, not well, per- not purposely. No, I know what you mean. But to to your point, I want you just to look at me as a human being. Yeah. So if you look at me as a human being, I'm a, I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm not gonna yeah. always get things right. I'm not gonna always say the right thing. I might piss you off because you know, especially with us, right? And, and, and Neil's a huge mental health advocate as well. Anytime you're a person that is always on a healing journey and you you talk about your mental health. They want us to do everything perfect. Now. That's right. I can't say anything yeah. too wrong. Yeah. You know, aren't you supposed to be the mental health guy? Yeah. Like, yeah, but like, huh? I still like fucking <laughs> or whatever. Like, yeah, it's, I don't. Yeah, but you're right. It does become. I'm worried that people are going to be like, well, how could you say that athletes don't want good? You don't want a good mental health? Because I don't. Because I'm a person. I'm selfish. I want a good game. And the, you're gonna have good games when everyone's fucking out of their minds. Damn, I, that's true. <laughs> it's like I don't. You know what? Sports was invented to train the military between wars. So that's really? yes, that's Which how sport? just all sports in like in in ancient Greece, mm-hmm. like two two three thousand years ago. Mm-hmm. It was between wars. They were like, we need to get the army to be able to do like to train between and they didn't have the the ropes and all that shit so they would like do battles or whatever yeah. so so that's what that's what the whole thing is like a anal- analogous of it's like a proxy for war so it's like cleveland versus or the clippers versus or whoever versus whoever or 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 uh, kansas city and and you're really mm-hmm. you know at the least these people are uh, are, are are lovers of violence right like, yeah. Uh, like, like at, the le- at the least, they're masochists. If you're a football player, boxer, UFC, yeah. MMA, at the least, you're a masochist. You, well, I I bet that they're more sadists than masochists. They really? like whooping ass more than they like getting their ass whooped. Mm. Masochists like getting their ass whooped. But even if you're a running back, you still know you're going to get hit, so you still have to kind of like the pain, right? You yeah. know what I mean? Well, you you're still got getting to, tackled. Even- right, but, you know, people, they like... Hurting. Yeah, they like... It's like hurt Damn. or be hurt. They're, it's a lot of aggression and what i would say is like people's need for pe- aggression and people's kind of unhealthy need for status is the greatest economic driver in world history damn <laughs> a guy really so you know what i mean yeah, yeah every yeah, yeah. great everyone on this wall d- didn't do it for the right reasons they did it because they wanted a come up they yeah, wanted yeah, yeah. i yeah. i'm sick of being treated like garbage Damn, and I'm sick, and I'm Damn. I I'm I know I'm more special than this. Mm. So so that they went out of they they moved from wherever they were to do a thing that would get them status, and they could but like you know what I am great. I am I do deserve exaltation. That's inventors. That's 
I mean, inventors are all there because they got it. They're trying to get some pussy. Like it's a long term <laughs> pussy plan. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of true. Though. It is, of course. You, it all, you, ever, you, you, ever, you ever, not a lot of women down at the patent office. They don't need to do it. They don't need to invent stuff. They'll just wait around. Guys will invent stuff. Get like guys that are like a, a three out of ten. You invent Elon Musk. You see that old picture of him when he had bad hair. He's yeah, fat, yeah, dope. Yeah. It's like the guy did it for to for to get peep, to get women. I mean, not exactly, but like that's yeah. the whole. Right. Yeah, that's like the primal urge. That's the pre- and when you watch the Facebook movie, that's the whole premise of the movie. That's why yeah. I created Facebook. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I'm not even mad at it. It's just don't break laws. Gotcha. But you can be rotten or whatever. Just don't break laws. That's well, all. Crazy good is streaming now. That's Netflix. what we're saying. All that to say. Yes. Watch crazy Neil good. Brennan. Crazy good. It's out right now. Make sure you go check it out on Netflix. And we appreciate check out you Neil's doing podcast it, man. too, man. The Blocks. Thanks, everybody. Anything else, Neil? Nah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> it's Neil Brennan. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.